Hello and welcome back to Offering Magazine, the podcast. So, like I mentioned in the outro for the first episode of Season 2, we have a special episode today where we're going to discuss what we have in plan for the upcoming season. So, for that, we have all the hosts with us today. So, let's perhaps uh, get started with a discussion with all of them to see what each one has planned and what type of podcast they want to do. So, let's go alphabetically like we usually do. All right. My name is Adrian. I'm a doctoral researcher at the Max Planck Institute for Molecular Cell Biology and Genetics in Dresden. I study the uh, development of the mammalian skull vault, and I like to be part of Offspring because I think there's a lot of parts of science that are interesting that we just generally don't get to talk about in our day-to-day lives. So this is part of me wanting to share more of that. All right. Hi again, everyone. I'm Allie. I'm also at the Max Planck Institute for Molecular Cell Biology and Genetics in Dresden, and I study the development of the pancreas trying to use organoids. Hi, my name is Bea, and I'm a chemist at the Max Planck Institute of Kohlenforschung in Mülheim an der Ruhr. And I study, I'm doing my PhD in late stage functionalization. I'm one of the new hosts. And I'm super excited to have some uh, some nice scientific conversations with a bunch of researchers to learn about science. Okay, great. I think I'm next, right? Uh, so I'm, I'm Nico. I'm at the Max Planck Institute for Neurobiology. And I study uh, the development of uh, neurons in Drosophila. And yeah, I mean, I think you can expect similar content from me as you had last year. So I hope you look forward to that. Hey, everybody. (laughs) Hi, my name is Sandra. Um, I'm one of the old hosts, even though you haven't really heard of me so far. I'm uh, now fresh postdoc, actually. (laughs) So I just recently defended at the Max Planck Institute of Neurobiology in uh, Munich, Martin's feet. And I'm also studying the fly brain, and I'm interested in neurotransmitter receptors and cool genetic tools to visualize them and use microscopy techniques to look at the distribution and I'm in the podcast group because I'm very much interested in talking to people about the topics equal opportunity diversity and discrimination in science and I hope you're looking forward to some of some of some of new episodes around these topics yeah it sounds great you're the only doctor amongst us we all look up to you Sure. If you have questions, just contact me anytime. <laughs> so it's like the doctor is in. <laughs> all right. So that all sounds good. I don't think I need to introduce myself, do I? People know me quite Come on, well. for completion. It's for the completion Come on. sake. Come you on. have to introduce yourself. All right. It's alphabetical. Fine. I'm Srinath. I'm from the Max Planck in Bad Nauheim. I look at the heart. Everyone's happy? All right. Very happy. Okay, let's move on to the discussion and why we want to do this episode. I mean, it's a rather interesting reason, right? Because we've been working on these topics for a while. We covered a few topics last season, but we realized that there's a lot of uh, audience interest in certain topics. And we wanted to engage uh, our listeners a little bit more. And we also wanted to move to a different style of uh, episodes with a bit more structure, perhaps a bit more scripted. So... Uh, I mean, we've been working quite uh, quite a bit in this direction over the break, and we've lined up a few interviews. So perhaps, uh, Nico, you wanna take away take it away with uh, with what you have in plan for us. Sure. Yeah. So I mean, as I'm mostly interested in in like uh, scientific careers, uh, I'm like I I would really like to do some uh, series on funding in science. So what exactly is happening there? Um, and research evaluation, these kinds of topics. So we're planning uh, some episodes in this direction already, and this year maybe even a bit more scripted, so that it's not just a basic interview with a person, but rather uh, we'll try to get some more information and put everything together, um, and maybe also shorter than last season. Let's see. Yeah, so this is one of the few things that we already started this season. So if you've seen the first episode, it was an interview with the ERC, So we kind of uh, rushed that episode out a bit because the ERC deadlines were coming up really shortly after the episodes were released and we wanted to get the information out there by that time so so that it still is relevant for this year's application cycle. 
But if you felt there were some, you know, deficiencies with the audio quality or the the editing, uh, I take full responsibility for it. We make sure that uh, we don't. I mean, we don't rush the next episodes coming out. So it'll be. I I I at least try to make it a much better quality. So moving on, Ali and Sandra, you two have something in mind. Do you want to take it away from here? Yeah. So as Sandra already mentioned, we're interested in exploring um, diversity and equal opportunity in science. And so one of the episodes we have in the pipeline right now is looking at uh, gender, uh, gender diversity and gender equality, as well as sexual orientation and the visibility of these groups in science and the importance of their visibility uh, to serve as role models for other individuals in science. Yeah, exactly. And I think also for me, at least, the, the idea be uh, behind all of these topics, so equal opportunity and diversity, is really to welcome just everybody into science. So independent of your gender, your ethnicity, your nationality, in an ideal world, everybody should be welcome. But this is sadly not the case for some people. And there are some marginalized people, some discriminated people. Um, so I think it's really important to, as Ali said, also to bring some awareness to those people and let them speak and also talk about the issues and problems they're facing in the science world. I mean, one thing, if I may quickly jump in there, that I think is quite important is if you exclude people and that are very talented, uh, just be based on like uh, their gender or race, that would just not make sense because you want to advance science, right? So I think this point is maybe a bit overlooked uh, um, in the discussion. Yeah, in doing some, just some, I guess maybe spoiler alert, some uh, prep for the episodes, you know, I, I think that science has a lot that we could learn from the business community where data has shown that if you have more diverse groups of people, you'll come to better decision makings because you'll explore more alternatives. There will be more differing opinions. And I think that science could learn from that. Yeah, I totally agree. I uh, wish you both good luck in preparing the episodes and uh, good luck with the interviews and everything. Perhaps uh, moving on, Adrian, do you want to spill the beans a little bit on the debate topic that we had planned? What well, we wanted to discuss on that, perhaps? Yeah. So one thing I'm working on is try and get a debate, a structured debate about the existing peer review system and its benefits and drawbacks, because we have a kind of established system that a lot of people um, kind of hold almost as like a, it's like a pseudo religious belief within science, I think. And I don't think it necessarily has to be torn down, but I think we should be critical of the, the systems that we have in place. And what's really exciting is that, especially over the last couple of years, we're seeing a lot of innovation in the way that different uh, academic institutions, journals, for example, are approaching the peer review question. You know, we've had this whole debate about open access, and you, you heard that here on Offspring. And now you're seeing, for example, eLife is mandating that uh, before you submit to them, you have to submit to BioArchive or archive, some archive, right? It has to, there has to be a preprint publication. And so I think it's an exciting time to have that discussion and to learn a little bit about the history and kind of why we are where we are. Yeah, definitely. And this is probably going to be one of those uh, few episodes which are differently formatted. So we're going to have a rather structured debate with the opposing views and uh, different, like, with different people and different topics. It's going to be quite interesting. It's going to be great. Yeah. So moving on, Offspring is uh, like self-proclaimed to be a science communication team. So we wanted to do more in that direction. And Beatrice, perhaps you can explain and shed some light on the episode you have in plan. Yeah, so um, the focus of my podcast um, would be centered around discussing scientific innovation um, that is taking place within the Max Planck Society, but also just to have conversations with other leading researchers and talk about uh, yeah, innovations that are taking place within the scientific community. My aim would be also target a wide range of audience, so not only the researchers within the Max Planck Society, but also a wider range of people um, that are interested in learning about science. Uh, these podcasts will also be mainly conversations. So 
they will be just a scientific conversation between two people trying to understand and learn about what's going on. The upcoming podcast that we have planned is um, Dr. Sassi, and he will be talking about algae and the use of algae as renewable energy sources in bioplastic, uh, renewable sources for bioplastics. And we also have an upcoming podcast with Spirochem, which is a Swiss company that's developing interesting spirocyclic complexes and um, their use in trying to advance medicinal chemistry. Sounds cool. Yeah, it sounds really cool. I'll make it like understandable for everyone. It, <laughs> it sounds very chemistry, but it won't be. <laughs> I mean, but that's the point of science communication, right? Like you try to take science mm -hmm. and you make sure that everyone gets on board and try to understand it. If we do our exactly, jobs. Yeah. You know, and it's nice to get some like uh, points of view from like chemistry people and people that are not biomedical uh, because you're the first one uh, that is from a different section. Yeah, I completely agree with that. We have too many people from the biomedical section. <laughs> yeah, we're in our bubble. Then I better not do any podcasts on like biology. Oh no, it's because... not a problem at all. <laughs> You've got half of the biomedical people not actually doing biomedical yeah, podcasts. So yeah. Okay, so these are interesting things for sure and we have all of these coming up very soon. But hopefully it's great if we get everything on track and released on schedule. And one thing that's changed since last uh, year is that uh, we've switched to a bi-weekly schedule instead of a weekly schedule because we do have to do our PhDs. It's important and trust me when I say this, the weekly schedules are a huge, huge pain in the neck. And uh, It's not sustainable. <laughs> Not for a team who's doing this on the side of their PhD, for sure. Maybe if we were doing this as a main job, that should be probably possible, right? Maybe if somebody wants to pay us. Yeah. Do I should hope often. if we're getting paid, we could put out a podcast every week. <laughs> well, okay, just a side note. Sandra is not asking for any donations. And please don't donate. <laughs> don't send any money. No, get no, 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 not interested. All good. We're good. But yeah, if we do start a podcast outside of PGNet, then maybe then you can donate. We'll we'll let you know about that later. <laughs> That's why we went bi-weekly, so we could do the other one on the side. Yeah, exactly. We've got to <laughs> alternate weeks. Okay. Okay, I think that's enough fun for one episode. And um, yeah, this is a rather short one. And we want to keep it that way because we keep in mind that we have a certain plan that's coming up and what episodes we want to release at what time and when we'll be bringing that to you. So until then, stay tuned and we'll be back right back with you in two weeks. Cheers. Bye. Bye-bye.